I thought I'd make a quick video because people have asked me lots of questions and in a way with some of the posts I've jumped ahead. So what people wanted to know was, did I have a massive feast on Sunday, the day before starting the fast? N no, I didn't because it'll just make it harder for me later in the fast because of the way the body uses energy. So when you want to say build something in the body, anabolism, which would be muscle or tissue or fat, that's one direction the body goes in. When it wants to break things down, which is catabolism, which would be breaking down tissue, whether it's damaged or new tissue or breaking down fat, that's a completely different pathway. So it would be like trying to run a gearbox in forwards very fast and then backwards very fast. So what I did on, on Sunday, I um, just had a low carb food all day. I didn't overeat, I didn't have any sweets or takeaways or anything like that. I didn't have any alcohol either, I don't really drink anyway. Then on Monday, the day before the fast, I was working all day, then at about half past two I had to deal with a, a swollen foot of one of my elderly clients. So I rushed home at about quarter past three and then I ate some, some steak, three eggs, some bone broth, uh, some cucumber and some courgette, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in a way because as I said before, I want to, I don't want to make the fast too difficult for myself. I already want to start to drive my body into ketosis. So that just means in lay terms, using fat as energy rather than glucose. Because the reason the fasting is difficult in the beginning is it's when the body wants to switch fuels. So most people, or unless you follow a low carb diet, most people burn glucose as their main source of fuel. So when you take that away, the, the body has a bit of a panic and hunts around for other fuels unless you're kind of used to this stuff already so in a way I was sort of partly going towards being in ketosis before I started the fast because generally for me when it gets to about hour 36 um, to about hour 45 that's when the bo my body switches properly over to using fat as a fuel and it's not so uncomfortable then so I'm at the stage at the moment where it's still wanting glucose so there's obviously cortisol rising adrenaline rising a bit because those particular hormones can raise blood sugar and the body can make uh, glucose itself you don't necessarily need to eat it then somebody else was asking about um, won't I get lots of muscle wastage over the fast the answer to that is probably towards the end maybe but in the beginning during a fast, the hormone levels change, change, which I'll go over in more detail. So very briefly, um, T3, which is the active thyroid hormone, goes down, and it goes down about 10 to 20% per day. So that does make the metabolism slow down a bit. The thing with thyroid hormone is they it uses everything as a fuel, whether it's fat or protein or glucose, and um, so it's not muscle sparing. So it's the body just trying to protect the muscle, and also in a fast growth hormone goes up a lot and growth hormone does lots of things including preserving um, lean muscle and encouraging fat to be used as a fuel it also is involved in bone building so again it'll um, offer some protection to the bones during a fast but yes um, after a while um, muscle tissue um, could be broken down during a fast, autophagy happens. This is something which people use fasting for because autophagy is just the degradation of old and damaged cells initially. The cells don't um, get eaten by anything in the body. There's not a Pac-Man or something going around. It's something that happens internally. So these can be um, old damaged proteins, uh, proteins that haven't folded up properly, uh, scar tissue, uh, atherosclerosis, um, organelles like mitochondria that are misfunctioning or misfiring a bit like a, an old car that's using up lots of petrol and producing lots of noxious fumes old mitochondria tend to do that so they don't produce as much energy as they should and they produce lots of free radicals so they get um, destroyed during um, autophagy there's lots of different kinds of autophagy and it depends on the cell type and the tissue and Autophagy is a really important biological process and lots of diseases are linked to not enough autophagy but again too much autophagy would just mean the body degrading itself and that's very unlikely to happen in a seven day fast. 
in general for autophagy the sweet spot is about three to four days uh, but I'm going for seven so I would imagine there will be a small amount of muscle loss but I can I'll find out at the end you know that was rather brief but I'll go into more detail when these particular events these biological events happen and when does autophagy start how do you know you're in autophagy uh, what happens when the hormone levels start to go all over the place is it harmful F from experience with a thyroid gland um, I know anyway that it drops down during a fast but also because I've done a shortish fast like th three days before I know that the levels go back up again when the fast is finished Thyroids are really complicated, but they're really interesting and there are lots of other things other than fasting which interfere with how the thyroid works because there isn't just one hormone that there are three really important ones. Well, four if we count thyroid stimulating hormone and I'll make a slide to explain how that works because it's much easier than trying to explain right now. But it's very interesting for people who have got a thyroid problem because of the way thyroid problems are treated in the UK. And there's the, the picture is massive and people only look at, at like two aspects of thyroid problems. And I hope I can educate you on a little bit more about the intricacies of it and maybe help anybody that is suffering with a thyroid problem. So I'm at our, not sure if you can see here, it's 40 hours of the fast. And here I've got some black coffee, which I've blended in the blender because I actually really hate black coffee. And when it's blended like this, it almost tastes like there's something in it. When it comes to coffee and fasting, it, it's not a good idea to have lots of coffee, but a little bit's okay. And I have to admit, I am addicted to caffeine. So there we go. So this video is about thyroid hormones and I'm going to use coffee to explain it because it's something quite important when it comes to daily life and fasting. And during a fast, in order to protect the um, muscle in the body, the active thyroid hormone T3 goes down. So what does T3 mean? During a fast, lots of different hormonal changes happen in order to make sure the person can, can function. So this is an evolutionary uh, adaptation because when we were hunter-gatherers, we didn't really know when the food was coming. And it would be uh, very ad unadvantageous if we went to pieces, if we couldn't find a woolly mammoth or anything to eat uh, for a couple of days. So there's lots of clever things that the body does. However, we're not really designed for prolonged fasting. That's why I'd say after seven days or maybe even five days, things start to get a little bit ropey and it becomes more stressful uh, than useful. So I'll start off talking about thyroid hormones and fasting because it's well known. If you know a little bit about biochemistry and metabolism, that when we restrict food of any kind, obviously the body wants to conserve energy, so it's got lots of ways of doing this, and also it wants to preserve um, healthy tissue. So thyroid hormone, the active one T3, which I'll get into in a moment, basically it metabolizes everything from fat, sugar, and protein. And protein in, a, in the body is muscle, and it's not a useful thing to be burning a load of muscle during a fast or times without food. So that's the reason that the thyroid hormones go down during a fast and other hormones like growth hormone go up to protect the muscle. So let's begin thinking about thyroid hormone. So as I said earlier, I'm a bit obsessed with coffee. And actually this brand here, as much as I hate um, black coffee, this is actually really nice. So if we think about the thyroid um, system, I'm just going to talk about four thyroid hormones because otherwise it'll get a bit confusing. So there's cascade system and there's a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone which for today we'll say it means go and get some coffee beans so the thyroid stimulating hormone makes me get um, some coffee beans which then get made into T4 so we shall pretend that the T4 that which is called thyroxine the inactive thyroid hormone is the coffee bean in order to make active thyroid hormone it's almost like having ground coffee. So this is the useful thyroid hormone, the ground coffee. And when the body wants to limit thyroid, in a fast, it, it doesn't really change the thyroid stimulating hormone, because I have tested this um, before, just not for this fast, because it'll get too expensive with um, blood tests and things. So 
there's plenty of, of coffee beans, there's plenty of coffee in the bag. The, the way the body slows down the thyroid is it basically makes something called reverse T3, which for this situation we'll call the reverse T3 the locked coffee pot. So in here we have the ground coffee which has been locked up so it can't be used. So during a fast what happens is the T3 goes down because it gets made into reverse T3 and it gets put in the pot and for now it's unable to be used. This is really important for people who have thyroid problems because in the UK the test that you get from the GP is just thyroid stimulating hormone which is basically um, let's go and buy some coffee beans and uh, T4 which is the thyroxine which is the coffee bean but as I've just explained now they're not actually that well they're not they're important but they're not the whole picture you need to know how much ground coffee you've got or T3 and how much of that T3 is in the pot so during a fast my coffee T3 goes down and it gets locked up in this coffee pot as reverse T3 so when I have had things measured after about a day and a half the T3 starts to go down and the reverse T3 the coffee in the coffee pot goes up and it goes up quite a lot and it keeps doing that for a couple of days and when it gets to about day three according to research it then just stays at the same level so it is true that any kind of food restriction will affect the thyroid but the good thing about the thyroid gland is as soon as I take the fasting away the whole process will go back to normal again so my thyroid levels go back up however there are lots of things uh, in daily life which um, affect thyroid glands and in the absence of fasting there are certain chemicals which get in the way of turning the coffee bean which is the thyroxine into the active T3 which is the ground coffee. This can be a variety of medications, some antidepressants do it, there are a variety of environmental contaminants, particularly things in fire retardants and certain cosmetics. Also there's genetically different people are better at grinding coffee beans than others so they're better at making T3 than others. So as I've said the important bit is turning the coffee beans the T4 into the active T3 which is the ground coffee and stopping it all getting put in the coffee pot so it can't be used. The liver and a few other organs, mainly the liver, changes the coffee bean into the ground coffee so liver issues can affect how the thyroid functions. Also there's a relationship between the gut and this thyroid process. Also hormone imbalances do it so that would be insulin and oestrogen when they've gone a bit out of control that can negatively affect the thyroid and also inflammation is a big player in how well the thyroid functions and makes its special hormones and changes them into one hormone versus the other and inflammation like autophagy which I'll come later come to later is a massive topic and I can't really cover it in just a video because biochemistry can be quite confusing so it needs to get broken down into more simpler ways to explain. Anyway thank you for your support and have a great day.